We began our ceremony today with an acknowledgement of the land on, for which we stand and the people who steward it across generations. Gettysburg College is on unceded indigenous land, including the traditional homelands of the Susquehanna, Conestoga, Seneca, and Haudenosaunee Confederacy, Lenny, Lenape, and Shawnee Nations, and the connections of the indigenous people of the land continue today. We have the responsibility to honor these connections, and we strive to understand our place within the past, present, and future of this indigenous land by reflecting on our relationship with the human and other than human relatives with whom it is shared. Won't you pray with me? Dearest friend, the one who poured the seas, you flung the stars in their vast shimmering constellations. Our friend who calls each blade of grass from the ground, the giver of passion for sport and desire for healthy competition, the bringer of curiosity and fascination. Abide here in this place with us. Grace us with your loving presence. Amen. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Great to be together, and congratulations. Welcome family, friends, and other supporters of our women's and men's lacrosse teams. It's really wonderful to be back together here. Today, we are going to honor 18 student athletes who are graduating from the college. As we get our ceremony this morning, I'd ask that each of our graduates um, stand uh, to be recognized. So, uh, Nathan Capriglione. Griffin Gallagher. Julia Horner. Connor Hume. Jora Janser. Carolyn Keenahan. Tate Kinsley. Spencer Knight. William Lakin Jr. Scott McMillan. Max Berlino. Joseph Hirsch. consequential education, an education that is among the most personal and student-focused in the entire nation. And for you 18 students, it's on vivid display today as we have a personalized graduation for you. Uh, let me begin uh, by expressing my joy and excitement for all that this remarkable group of seniors has, has accomplished, both on the field and off the field. The fact that you are here at the ceremony today speaks in large measure to the tremendous success you've achieved as leaders of your respective teams. I've been keeping up with the seasons, I've seen some really exciting games, and I'm really glad that we are here today because it means that you will continue to represent the Army in Blue in the days ahead. Congratulations again. Now, of course, 
course, your journey to the stage today has been anything but conventional. Yet, even among all the twists and the turns of the past couple of years, you've never once wavered. You've embraced the rigors of your Gettysburg College education, stretching your mind and strengthening your resolve to act. You've competed at the highest level of the Centennial Conference and across Division III lacrosse, earning victories against many of the very best teams in the country, all the while transforming into the best versions of yourself. And you've given back to this community in a variety of ways, but also through just and noble causes, including through your support of the Headstrong Foundation, the Lacrosse for Life Shaving event, and the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Your efforts undoubtedly have impacted hundreds, if not thousands, of lives for the better. You should all feel extremely proud of what you've accomplished here. At the end of the day, that's what this education is all about, readying you all to be doers, inspiring you to apply what you've learned here uh, for the greater good. You've achieved this as 18 Gettysburg College students, yes, but more impressively, you've achieved this as two teams. Two teams that have, only, have, that have only grown together amid your triumphs and your obstacles along the way. Graduates, our society needs more of that. We have big challenges facing our nation and the world, challenges that will require people of courage and conscience to address them, people like you. If you need examples of how to rise to this essential work, I, look, I invite you to look no further than your coaches whether they are building a new legacy from ground up. And I saw Coach Tony here a moment ago, but I don't see him now. Um, uh, or, he's there somewhere, where are you, Coach Tony? It's hiding in the back. Um, so building a legacy from the ground up, or the people who have shaped the legacy by virtue of who they are and the values they've instilled in you and countless others, the people who reflect the very best of what we inspire to be. And there I see Coach Cantelli and Coach Jordan somewhere. On Saturday, I will share a message with your classmates. And today, I want to share that message with you as you embark on the next chapter of your life. And that message is simply this. Building a better life and a better world means giving your full self to the one that's in front of you. So be present, be engaged, be all in. Graduates, you've embodied this commitment during your time here as Gettysburg students and athletes, and now you have the rare opportunity to add to your legacy by what you will do, and more importantly, by how you will do it in the days, weeks, and years ahead. I know we will rise to the challenge. Again, we wish you all the very best. Congratulations on your graduation and that all and all that is ahead. <laughs> it's now my pleasure to introduce our provost, Chris Abbey. Thank you, President Juliano, and good morning, everyone. Congratulations to those members of the class of 2022 who are graduating this morning. I'd like to welcome you, your families, and your friends. I would like to extend a special welcome to your loved ones who have supported you and cheered for you both on and off the field since the moment you selected Gettysburg College. As, as is evident from our formal attire, we too here are to recognize the completion of your work as undergraduates at Gettysburg College. I'm sure that you've been waiting for the day that you would wear your regalia, and here you are, the very first members of your class to do so. As you put on your cap and gown this morning, you may have been feeling some mixed emotions. This is a different kind of uniform. Donning your regalia means marks the conclusion of another chapter of your life. You are moving toward the next chapter. The skills and the knowledge which you have acquired here in the classroom and on the field will be instrumental as you move forward. You have practiced and challenged yourself, and you are ready. Through the rigorous liberal arts and sciences curriculum, through your educational opportunities, both on and off campus, through your own special Gettysburg experience, you are ready. But keep in mind that part of Gettysburg College will travel with you wherever you go 
and will affect everything you do. The manner in which you approach your life, both professionally and personally, the way in which you treat others, the manner in which you think about and solve problems, the decisions you make, and the processes you employ to make those decisions. Your hard work, your continued development as engaged citizens of the global community, your Gettysburg experience. This is what it means to be orange and blue. This is truly your uniform, and we hope that you continue to wear it with pride. And we cannot wait to see what you can do with it. Your professors, advisors, and mentors here on the campus will miss seeing you in our classes, labor laboratories, studios, rehearsal spaces, offices, even in this room, and on the field, of course. But we, should, we, but we share the excitement with you as you move on to the next stage of your life. Watching talented young people leave us is never easy. There's a bit of sadness about that. Yet we take pleasure in imagining what your future will bring. Please stay in touch with your friends, your professors, and think about what Gettysburg <coughs> meant to you while you were here. It is important to remain rooted to meaningful places which will always be cheering you on. And on this special occasion, I'm pleased to introduce to you a dedicated and inspiring member of the college's faculty, Joseph Brandauer, Associate Professor of Health Sciences. Professor Brandauer majored in physical education at the State College of Education in Salzburg, Austria, and received his master's degree and PhD in kinesiology at the University of Maryland, College Park. Professor Brandauer joined the faculty in the Department of Health Sciences in 2008. Though Professor Brandauer holds high expectations for his students, he provides the tools and the skills necessary to face not only the challenges of his courses, but also facilitate the ongoing process of learning for a lifetime. Put simply, Professor Brandauer encourages his students to become deep analytical thinkers. In 2020, Professor Brandauer was appointed to serve as the director of the Johnson Center for Creative Teaching and Learning. In this role, he developed programming that provides faculty with opportunities to hone their pedagogical skills, explore collaborative and experiential learning techniques, and incorporate technological innovations. Central to the JCCTL's mission is the belief that learning occurs within and beyond the classroom. And now, on behalf of, our, of the faculty, Professor Joseph Brandauer has some remarks to share with you before we set out on your on journey. Heartfelt congratulations to you, class of 2022. Thank you for your hard work and your commitment over the past four years. College is never easy, it's not meant to be. I think we can all agree that this has been a little bit not easy there than we had wanted it to be. And I really appreciate you taking out uh, some really difficult times. So what do I say, and I commence an address that hasn't been already said to you by your advisors, your teachers, your family, your teammates, and your coaches. I will confess to you that this has kept me up a little bit at night over the past few weeks. So like any self-respecting Gen Xer, I went to the source of all knowledge, Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the collective advice that my 560 followers, I counted them this morning, <laughs> conferred on me. I got seven likes, <laughs> and I got three pieces of advice. <clears throat> One was of uh, support. You will rock it. That was from Dr. Thompson in the chemistry department. 
I got a procedural recommendation, which I think you will all appreciate. Be funny and be brief. <laughs> and I got one piece of advice for graduates. Be fearless and give back to your community. So yeah, some wisdom. Overall, not a ton to work with. Uh, and that makes sense to me. It makes sense to me because what this muted response tells me is that giving advice to college graduates is hard. It is especially hard to a group like you, and especially so in the year 2022. The world hasn't been kind, and there's work to do. And you are in an accomplished, hardworking, and well-coached group who understands the value in teamwork, teamwork and mutual support. You saw that by the way you cheered each other on at the beginning of the ceremony. You were able to break down complex problems into smaller, manageable ones, like say, seven goal deficits in a conference. <laughs> <team. laughs> Too soon. <laughs> but the point is, you chip away at it one by one, right? And you overcome. And you have experienced setbacks, and you didn't let them stop you. And I have respect for few things more than this, overcoming challenges and persevering. With each challenge, I see that you try to reset your feet, focus on process over outcome, learn to rely on and be supported by your team, and keep moving. It's not always pretty. It's never perfect. <coughs> But it hardly ever is, nor should it be or does it need to be. Over time, you persevered through COVID and countless other challenges. In short, from a faculty member's perspective, you hold the evidence, and we'll get back to that word in a bit, of the values and skills that we hope that you will gain and build as part of the excellent and comprehensive liberal arts and sciences education you have worked to receive at Gettysburg College. And for that, we are deeply grateful. So I'd like to use the brief amount of time, be brief, that we have together to ask you to reflect on your accomplishments over the past few years. And specifically, I'd like you to think back to your days as a first year student. And I'd like you to think about what it means to be a swan. And I say this for the following reason. Whenever I meet a student at my Z for the first time, and it's typically a first year student, and we get to know each other over the course of a 30, 60 minute conversation, I ask them this question. How would you like to be described as a person when you leave this institution in almost four years? What are the skills and what is the knowledge that you hope to gain? And for a first year student, this is often an idea that seems very remote, so I follow up by asking this. How would you like me to describe you in my letter of recommendation, three and a half years from now. And what evidence of these traits will you generate to help me write a strong and convincing letter? And as you think back to your time as a first year, you can imagine and recall that this talk of recommendations and evidence has a way of sharpening a student's focus, as it should. And upon reflection, most students come up with a variation of the following. I'd like to be seen as somebody who's smart, who works hard, who's adaptable, and who's nice. Smart, works hard, adaptable, and nice. A swan. And now I would not become an academic if I didn't enjoy carefully defining and overthinking things and overthinking things again. And so I've talked with hundreds of students over the years and many colleagues as well. And there are two common misconceptions that many of us, if not all of us, commit to from time to time. One, we mistake smart for focused and consistent effort. And two, we confuse nice for kind. We mistake smart for focused and consistent effort. This is a concept that you as athletes understand, at least in principle. Talent or smarts in an academic sense is important, and it is the consistent expenditure of focused effort that yields the meaningful long-term gain that maximizes your potential. And I believe in this completely. That's why I became an exercise physiologist. 
And today I want to send you on your way by reinforcing, reinforcing this idea. Personal and intellectual growth occurs in much the same way as, your progress, as an athlete does. It happens through repeated and focused challenge and your adaptation into a new and improved version of your former self. For almost all of us, this is an ongoing and lifelong step-by-step -step pursuit that gives our lives meaning and purpose. So please, keep looking for opportunities to challenge yourself personally, intellectually, and otherwise in ways that bring meaning and purpose into your life. Now what about nice versus kind? There's an important difference. Being kind goes beyond a superficial and polite interaction. Being kind means, first and foremost, being honest, even when it is uncomfortable. It means speaking up and standing up for what is right. It means building community by including and supporting people different from yourself, connecting with those with whom you disagree. And so I'll say it one more time. Being kind often means <coughs> being uncomfortable. I wish for you that you will find yourself in a community that cares about you, is honest with you, and looks out for you. And I also hope that you are able to become an active participant in this honest, respectful, and open group. I've been attending commencement ceremonies at Gettysburg College for 14 years now, and during each one, someone says inevitably, you are walking out into a complex and complicated world. This year is no different. I'd say perhaps even more so than most average years. I don't really know what an average year is anymore. <laughs> so just as I asked my first year students to think about evidence of their success as they begin their academic career at Gettysburg, I invite you all to briefly reflect, and I say this with emphasis, with great pride, <coughs> on the many ways your experience at Gettysburg has helped you grow and has shaped and prepared you for an uncertain future. And as you do this, the evidence of the success of a Gettysburg education is plainly evident to me from the dozens and dozens of students who have kept in touch with me over the years, much as they do with my colleagues. They are proud of the meaningful work they do and the difference they make in people's lives. Many of them have begun mentoring current students at Gettysburg. I hope that you choose to follow in these students' footsteps by defining for yourself what it means to truly be successful, what it means to be smart, what it means to be kind, and I strongly success, uh, suspect that you will find that the acronym SWAN doesn't fully describe your values as well as it may have when you were a first year student, much like I did. I also know that your priorities and the definitions will shift over time. That's precisely the point of your Gettysburg education. You're able to reflect, to adapt to a changing world, and to make the most out of the opportunities ahead of you. However you will come to define your priorities, I hope that you take the opportunity your Gettysburg education has afforded you to smoothen the path for those who follow in your footsteps. I wish for you to find challenges that you find, will find meaningful. Most importantly, I sincerely hope that you will distinguish yourself by being kind to those that most need it and that you receive kindness from those around you in return. Thank you for the extraordinary honor of allowing me to be a commencement speaker today. I look forward to congratulating you in person in a short while. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of the ceremony. Good luck this weekend. Go Bullets. to the President, to the podium, to confer your degrees. Thank you. Next day, we are pleased to present for his humorous, kind, thoughtful, and insightful and heartfelt comments.
Are you all ready to receive your degrees? That doesn't sound very enthusiastic. You can try this again. So are you guys ready to receive your degrees? Well, we are ready to confer these degrees upon you. So, um, Chris, over to you. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree please rise? <laughs> <laughs> President, President Iuliano, these students have completed all requirements leading to the, the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Upon recommendation of the faculty, I ask you to confirm upon them this degree. These are very solemn moments and we have very special words. So here we go. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Gettysburg College and the laws of this commonwealth, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts. I admit you to the rights and privileges which pertain to the bachelor's degree, and I charge you to use responsibly the learning and the insight that you have acquired. Congratulations. You may be seated. Will the candidate for the Bachelor of Science leading to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Upon recommendation of the faculty, I ask you to confer upon her this degree. In fact, more than completed uh, her degrees, but exceeded our best expectations for her. Um, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Gettysburg College and the laws of the Commonwealth, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science. I admit you to the rights and privileges which pertain to the bachelor's degree, and I charge you to use responsibly the learning and the insight you have acquired. Congratulations. So, will the graduates please rise and come forward as your name is called? For the bachelor the degree Bachelor of Arts, Nathan Michael Caprivion. <laughs> Nathan is a public policy and political science double major, cum laude, from New, New Milford, Milford, Connecticut. <laughs> Griffin Deneen Gallagher. Completed an OMS, Inter Organizational Dynamics major. He's from Armour, Armour Pennsylvania. <laughs> Julia Ryan Horner. Julia is an organization society, uh, society major, cum laude, from Leesburg, Virginia. Connor Michael Hume. Connor is a political science major from Eckridge, Maryland. Laura Catherine Janser. <laughs> Nora is a political science major from Haverton, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Carolyn M. Keenahan. <laughs> Carolyn is a health sciences major from Yorktown Heights, New York. Kate Kinsley.
Tate is a health sciences major, cum laude, Malvern, Pennsylvania. Spencer T. Knight. Spencer is an English major uh, from Potomac, Maryland. William Patrick Lakin, Jr. Name is a health sciences major from Bluebell, Pennsylvania. Scott McMillan. Scott is also a health sciences major from Malvern, Pennsylvania. Max E. Berlino. Max is a health sciences major from Sparta, New Jersey. Joseph Thomas Hirsch. <laughs> Joseph is an economics major from Laude from Summit, New Jersey. Carolyn is an OMS major in Organizations and Society from New Rochelle, New York. <laughs> Jonah Daniel Schur. Sure. <laughs> Jonah is an economics major from Lottie from Chevy Chase, Maryland. Summit, New Jersey. Elon Isaac Tuckman. Gonna sort of some, so, uh, a sociology major from New Hope, Pennsylvania. Summa cum laude. Okay, folks, now we have the opportunity to um, move our tassel. So, uh, if you're not standing, class of 2022, please rise. It's a custom at commencement for graduates to move their tassels uh, from the right side to the left side, signifying their new status as bachelor degree holders. Uh, members of the class of 2022, it is now my distinct honor to invite you to do so.
So we have a tradition at the college of ending or close to ending the ceremony with a charge from the president to our graduates, and it is now my honor to deliver that charge. I began my comments today speaking to speaking about what it means to build a better world and how you, as Gettysburg graduates, have the rare opportunity in front of you to shape your own legacy. As Professor Brandauer so eloquently uh, articulated, you have everything within you to make a difference, to be a swan, uh, to leave a contributive and meaningful life, a consequential life. Guided by his words to you today, and inspired by your actions over these past four years, my charge to you is simply this, dream daringly. Be brave in the face of changing tides and problems that at first blush may seem insurmountable. Step forward into the arena of tomorrow's ideas, policies, and decisions, and lend your voice and thinking to our future. Be humble and yet confident in the many talents you will bring to a world that needs you. And lastly, believe in yourself, because when everything is said and done, the courage to try is the courage to truly live. Graduates, our entire campus will be cheering for you this weekend. You have represented the orange and blue with grace, pride, and dignity over the last four years. While we hope you will meet with success in the coming weeks, please know that you are already champions in the eyes of your new alma mater. On behalf of the entire Gettysburg College community, I offer you the very best for this weekend. Congratulations for all that you've done. And again, do great work. out of the theater, will walk up to Pennsylvania Hall and process through. We invite guests to follow the graduates. Ushers will direct you. There will be an opportunity for photos and a light reception will follow at the alumni house. We will now sing the alma mater, led by Olivia Duffy, a member of the class of 2022. The music is printed on the back of your program. After the singing of the alma mater, Chaplain Bright will pronounce the benediction. We ask you rise and to remain standing until the recession leaves the room. Our newest graduates will follow the platform party down the aisle.
Won't you pray with me? To the one who is our help, to the one who will make us great when we are faithful to our friends, to the one who loves us to skill and pride, to the one who gives us power when we are merciful, away from this place, but never each other. Amen. Amen.